What's up everyone? It's your boy NornRad89 here. Today we're going to bring you another rad movie review. We're going to be talking about one of my favorite horror films of all time, Hellraiser. And then over the next couple weeks I'm actually going to be reviewing all 10 of the films in the franchise and then dropping a ranking video at the very, very end. So hopefully you guys stick with me through this whole journey and I can bring some new fans to the Hellraiser franchise. That would be awesome. Also, official spoiler, spoiler warning ahead and everything. So if you haven't seen it, go out and watch it. And if you don't want to watch it, hopefully I can sell you on it and maybe you want to watch it after you see this video. So let's get into it. Roll it. So, Hellraiser, the 1987 psychosexual body horror film written and directed by Clive Barker. He also wrote the book. It was definitely a horror film that was ahead of its time, accompanying great practical gruesome effects with a good written character development story in it and everything. It definitely strived to be different from a lot of the horror movies that were coming out in the 80s and everything. It actually made you think. So that's why I like this film is because when you watch it, you really have to think about it and appreciate the mythology and the stuff that it has to say. And Hellraiser does have a lot of things to say. Like most people would just tell you that these films are just about demons who come from hell to take your soul and torture you, which isn't a complete lie, but it's also not completely the truth. Hellraiser, in essence, in the truth, is, also, is really down and dirty, a film that is about obsession, love, and all those kind of things, and we could really relate to those things. Those are things that people have experienced throughout life and everything, so it has very relatable topics, which is great for a film. That's a good way to grab people and grab audience members and stuff. Clive Barker just takes us on a twisted route and a weird roller coaster ride, showing us how these things could influence your life and affect your life in a negative way and everything. From the very get go, like when we see Frank playing with the box in the beginning, he is a man that has gone across the world searching for all the pains and pleasures and experienced so many things, but he wants more. That, that he just, he's so greedy and it's teasing him. So he searches out Pandora's box. And of course he opens the box, unleashing our first appearance of the Cenobites and everything. And we end up finding out that they're not really demons in an essence. They're not even like angels or demons. You can't really look at the Cenobites as an evil or a good. They're kind of neutral. They're kind of in the middle. They're here as explorers to try to find and experience new dimensions and new things. So really, in essence, they aren't even bad villains or anything like that. So that's what's kind of cool is why I like Clive Barker because it's really good. Like, I love horror villains and I love very evil people and stuff, but the way that he wrote the Cenobites is cool because they're, they're neutral and everything in, in, in essence, which is really great for the film. It's powerful. It shows you that the real evil is humans and like humanity and some of the things that we decide to do with our choices and how we act as people and everything like that that is actually the true evil in most of these films and stuff like that we also get some really great like i said really great character written development story in this film like all the characters julia kirsty frank larry like all these characters have great character arcs and everything and it's very well written i love the script and everything it's powerful it always drags me into it and Kirsty, she's the main protagonist of this film. She is the daughter of Larry, and Julie is the stepmother who was having an affair with Frank, which is Larry's brother, and Frank is the one that opened the box and ended up getting taken by the Cenobites, and he gets taken to hell. But, but, there's a big, huge but, and he ends up coming back, which is amazing, so through Larry spilling blood in the floor on the attic of the house they move into, which is where Frank actually opened the box in the attic of that house. When he drops his blood on the floor, Frank is actually able to escape the hell dimension and then comes back and he's not fully back yet. He's just like a half built like human, just, you know, muscles showing and organs and everything. He's not fully back yet. But Julia ends up finding him. And because Julia had an affair with him, her love and obsession takes a hold of her. And she wants to do everything she can. She'll do anything to have Frank back. And even when Frank tells her that he needs her to bring men to the house and have her 
basically kill them and leave them there so he can feed on them and bring him back to life and everything. <laughs> so, he, like, it's crazy. Like I said, it's in essence about obsession and love and addiction and those things and what it can do to you and make you like as a person and everything. So that's why I really like this film, too. Like I said, it's, in, it's a very in-depth character development story. It's not just a horror film. It is really a great written story, and that's why I like this film and everything. But also, we have to talk about the great practical effects and the gore. Like, of course, is top-notch in this film. Probably second to none, the only other film I could think that has better practical, really gory effects than this is John Carpenter's The Thing. Both of these films are right up there on that tip top of the mountain as of as a point of like using the effects and it's real, the way it looks and everything. It just, oh, it's horrifying, realistic, and I love that, you know what I mean? And they actually took the time and spent the time to make these things and put it on the film for us so that we can enjoy it and watch it. So definitely great. Like I said, I'm not a huge fan of CGI. I'm definitely a bigger fan of practical effects. So that's why this film climbs really, really high on my list. And it's one of my favorite horror films because of that reason. And like I said, even the book, like when I read the book, I was so obsessed and loved these films and this franchise that I went out and I got the Clive Barker book that goes with the movie. And the book is so good. Like just the descriptive words he uses and all those things, like it really lends to telling the story. And uh, I really just wanted to talk about these films and get it out there and review them and stuff to bring more people over to see these franchise, this franchise and everything because Hellraiser I think doesn't get as much love as it should compared to some of the other horror franchises that are out there. Like I said, Pinhead, great characters. We also have one of the best female protagonists in any film or franchise ever is Kirsty. She's in this film, you know, she's right up there for me with like Ripley from Aliens. Like Kirsty embodies a survivalist. She knows how to fight Pinhead and everything. And we get her in three movies throughout this franchise. And it's just her return is great every time. Like, I love it, just seeing her interactions with Doug Bradley and the way she uses her knowledge to manipulate the Cenobites and, like, win over them and everything. It's just, oh, it's so good. It's like a puzzle chess game for life, for, like, your soul. So it's like, like, <laughs> what kind of tense more situation do you want than that? You know what I mean? It's just a very powerful horror film. It's got everything you want. It's got gore. It's got character development. It's got really beautiful shots that are just lit like the way the lighting is and everything especially when the Cenobites show up and stuff the way they light the room the sound effects and everything like Clive Barker definitely had an amazing idea his vision and as he brought it to life and then put it on the screen for all of us to see oh I was I'm so happy like I said every day every time I talk about it I just want to watch it even more <laughs> like you know what I mean it's one of those horror movies for me it's just always grabs me always pulls me in and everything and I wanted to talk about it so you guys know about this film. Wanna, I want to bring more people to this franchise and everything and stuff. So hope you guys like these, this review and everything. Overall, in my book, Hellraiser definitely gets a 10 out of 10. This is a hard 10 for me. There's like no way I could think of this film being any better than it already is. It was a perfect piece of horror art that I love. And I enjoy it every time I watch it. So definitely a hardcore 10 out of 10 for me and everything and like i said over the next couple weeks i'm going to be dropping reviews for all the hellraiser films and then at the end i'm going to drop a ranking review video so hopefully you guys stick around with me and stuff like i said keep that notification bell on and subscribe and everything so you can stay up to date whenever i drop videos and all that stuff thanks for hanging out with me guys peace out